Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. This week, I'm sure you probably saw by the title, I am cooking from my pantry. It was my last week without my husband here. He's actually back from his work trip now, but I decided I was going to do a no spend week and just cook from the pantry. So I'm gonna show you the four meals that I made from our pantry. First up, I am making these pantry steak fajitas. And usually when I find a pantry meal I wanna make, I start with one item and it kind of spirals from there. So I found this one single steak in the freezer that really needed used up. It was starting to just look discolored. And I also had some peppers and onion in my fridge and freezer, as well as a little bit of this fajita seasoning left. I am no steak pro. I leave that to my husband normally. I was cooking this on a high heat in my skillet with some olive oil on both sides until it reached about 145 degrees, which should be a medium steak. Once it hit that temperature, I went ahead and just moved it to a plate to rest for a few minutes. Into the same skillet, I'm adding my red onion as well as my peppers from the freezer. I always buy them on sale and cut them up and put them in the freezer so they're easily available to me. I just cooked those in this pan until they were tender with a little bit of olive oil, which took about 10 to 15 minutes. I was actually pleasantly surprised with this steak. I did let it rest for about 10 minutes before slicing into it. Like I said, I was aiming for a medium steak and I was very happy to cut into it and see the pink in the middle. I think I did a pretty good job overall. Steak on the stove is not something I like to do. I usually leave it up to my husband, but since he wasn't here, I was just making it work. And if you're wondering if I seasoned this steak, cause I did not say that yet, I just added salt. I am a firm believer that a good steak just needs salt on it. And I'm also going to toss this in the fajita seasoning later. So I didn't think I needed to add more fajita seasoning to the steak. Now that my peppers and onions are done, I'm going to add in this fajita seasoning. There was about half a pack here, which I did use most of. At first, I just tossed it in with my peppers and onions, and then I added my steak in a little later. Like I said, I just went ahead and tossed the steak in the seasoning just a bit. That seasoning is not my favorite from Kroger's anyways. It's my least favorite fajita seasoning mix, so I didn't want a lot of it in there anyway. Here's what my finished plate looked like. I just topped it with a little bit of sour cream and I was so, so pleasantly surprised with this dinner. I was very proud of myself for not overcooking the steak and making it chewy and these really hit the spot. Next up, I was aiming to make more of a chicken stew, but it kind of ended up being a chicken soup. I had these carrots and potatoes. This is what inspired the whole meal. I wanted to get rid of both of these. First thing I'm doing to my crock pot is adding two chicken breasts, and I'm just going to season those up a little bit with some salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning I did not measure. Next, I added in half of a chopped onion, my three chopped up carrots, three chopped up potatoes, which later on I did find another potato in the cabinet, so I went ahead and added a fourth one in there, a half cup of chopped up celery that I keep in the freezer. I added some of my favorite Parmesan ranch seasoning. I do get this at Walmart. It is by Blackstone. And then one can, I believe there are about 10 ounces of cream of chicken soup. I found just a little bit of chicken broth that needed to get used up. I used it for a different meal. So I went ahead and just added that in there as well. I believe there was about a half cup of chicken broth. I added my lid on and let this cook on low for about four hours. After the four hours was up, I did go ahead and remove my chicken. I'm not going to shred this chicken super fine. I wanted it to be in bigger pieces, so you can either chop it up in larger pieces or shred it super fine, totally up to you. And then I'm adding about one cup of heavy cream. Also, a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. I decided to go with more of a Parmesan flavor since I used the Parmesan ranch seasoning, and I'm so glad it did. The flavor was so good.
down in the description box if you're new and don't know this. I will try to list out everything I added into all of these recipes as close as I possibly can to the measurements that I used. But for the most part in this video, I was just kind of adding things to these meals and going with it. I added my chicken back in and as you can see, the chicken is in bigger pieces. It's not super tiny, that's what I wanted. I gave it a good mix, let everything kind of come together. I tasted it and decided to add a little bit more of my Parmesan ranch seasoning, a little bit more pepper and Italian seasoning, and then I gave it one final stir. I put the lid on, letting the cheese melt for another few minutes, and then this is what my finished bowl looked like. I topped it with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese as well as some parsley and like I said this came out as more of a soup not as thick as I had imagined but wow I was so in love with this soup I have tons of leftovers I actually froze them so I can eat them later. Next I'm just making some simple breakfast sandwiches. I had cooked some sausage gravy biscuit casserole. Um, I believe it was my last video or the video before. I'll link it below for you if you're interested. And I had two biscuits left over. I had half a pound of sausage that I went ahead and cooked up in two patties. And then I decided to get out some eggs, cheese, and a little bit of syrup from the fridge. For my eggs, I like to add a little bit of milk or half and half to them garlic powder, salt, and pepper, and then I whisk it together in a little cup. It's easiest to do in a cup like this because then I can just pour it straight into my little egg shaper. I don't exactly know what this is called, but I got them on Amazon. I can try to link them below. Also, I don't know if I'm using it upside down or not. I never know which way it's technically supposed to go, but I just like to cook my eggs in here for sandwiches because it makes them the perfect shape, as you can see, and I just cook them for a few minutes on each side until it's nice and firm. I use the same skillet because why dirty another dish to just kind of brown up and reheat my sausage patties and I top those with some mild cheddar shredded cheese. Adding the lid it will help the cheese to melt really well on these as you can see. And then here's what my finished sandwich looked like. I did have two sandwiches, that's all I had this night. And if you have never dipped your sandwich, your breakfast sandwiches in syrup, it is so good. If you've had the McGriddle from McDonald's, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It is so good. Definitely not healthy, but delicious. So if you've never done that, give it a try. I think you will love it. And of course, last but not least, I made some beef stuffed shells. I had these jumbo noodles in the pantry and I knew it wasn't enough for both me and my husband, so I decided to use those. And I have made these a million times and I pretty much had everything that I would need to make them. So I went ahead and just started cooking up my jumbo noodles in some salted water. I cooked them till they were al dente, not completely done, and I drained those off. You want them to be soft, but still pretty firm. Now to get started on our meat mixture, I have about a fourth of a yellow onion. I'm going to mince this up super duper fine, adding it to a nice big bowl. Also going into this bowl, I am using about a half pound of ground beef, about an eighth of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs, one egg, about a teaspoon of minced garlic, a couple shakes of salt and pepper, a few shakes of garlic powder, and about a fourth teaspoon of parsley. Mm -hmm. 
and you can use a glove if you really want to. I am not that picky, I just get it mixed together with my hands, which I think honestly is the best tool, and then we're going to go ahead and start stuffing our shells. To my 8x8 eight eight dish, I'm adding a little bit of spaghetti sauce to the bottom of that. I'm going to make sure the entire bottom is covered before I add in any noodles. Into each one of your noodles, you're going to add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of the ground beef mixture. And just fill up that pan with your filled noodles. If you buy the package of noodles from the store, I believe this is about a third of that package. I want to say they're like 12 ounces and I used about 4 ounces of noodles. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my sauce on top of my noodles. It was a little saucy, but in my head I was like, what am I going to use this little bit of sauce for? So I went ahead and just added the entire jar and I made sure that the noodles were covered in every spot so they wouldn't get hard in the oven. I covered that with foil and it went into my oven to bake for about 35 minutes. After those 35 minutes, I took it out of the oven, removed the foil, and I'm sorry I didn't realize I was not quite in frame here. Next, we are going to just make sure that ground beef is all the way cooked. I'm very weird about meat temperatures. So I always go in and check and they were indeed hitting temperature. So I went ahead and moved on with my cheese. I did have about a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese in the fridge. And then I went ahead and topped it with some grated Parmesan as well. Back into the oven this went for about 10 minutes and then I decided to turn broil on for about 2-3 to three minutes to get that nice crisp top. Here is what my finished plate looked like. I topped it with a little bit more parmesan cheese and some fresh parsley. I impressed myself here. This turned out so delicious. Very close to my dad's recipe. I did not know my dad's recipe off the top of my head. I've made it with him before but man this was super close. Thank you so much for sticking this video out this week. Leave me a flower below if you made it to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought below. And I will see you guys back here on Wednesday. I promise I will have a video up Wednesday. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Bye!